Hi and welcome to Data Garden. Thanks for checking out my video. I hope you're doing very well. In today's video, we want to talk a bit about extreme gradient boosting or in short XG boost or sometimes XGB. Extreme gradient boosting is uh, a machine learning algorithm and in the last couple of years it's become really popular. I think particularly for users of uh, Python, it has kind of been a very choice algorithm for all sorts of uh, predictive problems and uh, for good reason. And in today's video, which is the start of my little series about XGBoost and the implementation in R, uh, I first want to go into uh, a bit into what is this algorithm, why is it good, also what is not so good about it, and uh, then towards the end of the video I will be giving a bit of an outlook on the remainder of the series, what we will be, uh, what we will be learning. So what is XGBoost? It's an open source algorithm that is using the gradient boosting technology, as the name suggests. Now, since this is kind of a beginner tutorial, I don't want to go too much into the technicalities of it. But roughly speaking, what this means is that XGBoost combines hundreds or even thousands of on their own relatively weak learning algorithms, for example, small decision trees, and it iteratively combines them in such a way that they create one very strong um, learning algorithm. So basically, uh, to put it in another way, it starts with a, let's say, a simple decision tree, and then it gets some error then it takes the residuals of this uh, initial um, first tree that was built and builds a second tree that is fitted on the residuals. And it fits it, of course, in such a way that it reduces the error further. Then it builds the same tree on the uh, a third tree on the residuals of the second tree, and so on. Now, uh, if you want to learn more about the technicalities, then uh, I think there's a decent Wikipedia article about gradient boosting in general, which um, like it uh, also covers an example about um, like a simple regression problem uh, with gradient boosting. I think it's quite understandable. XGBoost is available for, I think, all the major uh, platforms that you might want to be working on, such as Python, R, Julia, Java, C++, and so on. Of course, in this tutorial, we'll be focusing on the R implementation, um, particularly for Python. I think there are a lot of other great tutorials out there. But uh, with R, I think um, the, uh, the space is still a bit small. And I hope that with this video, I can motivate you to also use this great algorithm in R, because certainly, uh, it enriches a lot of predictive uh, modeling pr um, projects quite massively. Yeah, it is like quote unquote advanced machine learning because uh, it has a few things that most machine learning algorithms don't have, such as, like I already discussed, it combines multiple weak learners into one strong learner iteratively, so one step after the other. It has really good hyperparameters to avoid overfitting. What this means is um, maybe if you have worked with some uh, form of predictive modeling already, then you have had the challenge where your model works really well on the training data, but not so well on the testing data or the, the new data that you feed it. And XGBoost has a lot of uh, like little tweaks that you can use in order to make sure your model is, let's say, only fitted so much to the training data that it still works on new data. And finally, um, in theory at least, 
you can just feed XGBoost a big data set with like all sorts of columns that uh, you don't even know if they're important or not. And XGBoost will automatically select which uh, features of your data are important and should be employed in the uh, decision solution, so to say. What is so good about it? XGBoost comes with two boosting algorithms, uh, actually three, but uh, the third one is just the derivative of this, uh, the tree algorithm here. And so, yeah, you can basically either do a model that is based on decision trees, which obviously lends itself more towards classification problems, or you can use uh, boosting of small linear models where like essentially uh, the algorithm would create a small linear regression model and then fit more and more linear regression models on top of that. Um, consequently, XGBoost has options for all common machine learning problems, which I think basically it's uh, binary classification, multi-class classification, and regression. It is really quite easy to implement. You will see in the next video that we can do it in just a few minutes. And even though it doesn't hurt to know the mathematics about it, uh, you really don't know it to get good results. And with, I think, some common sense, uh, you can get a proper good model with it without really understanding anything about what it does. XGBoost is very good at capturing nonlinear effects in the data, like nonlinear correlations. Um, consequently of that, it has really good predictive performance. Uh, you can see that if you look up, uh, let's say the Wikipedia article, for example, then you will find that it won quite a few competitions in uh, data science where there was some predictive problem and everyone tried to find the best solution to it and XGBoost is often the best solution or at least involved in the best solution. And I put that here as a side note, unknown ranges of data. I think if you have a problem where you really have to extrapolate a lot into the future or uh, a lot out of, out of your training data, outside of your training data, then maybe it isn't your choice algorithm um, because due to the nature of the algorithm, there will just not be, particularly if you use the tree algorithm, uh, not be any information about the outside space. Whereas if you have a, let's say, linear regression model of any sort, then it will be able to extrapolate beyond the data that was uh, beyond, yeah, beyond the limits of what was seen in the training data set. Mm, and finally, what is good is that it's quite efficient and it gets good results very quickly. Now, when I say good, then the focus is on that it's good but not great because coming to the negatives about it, if you want to optimize it properly, then it really isn't fast at all. In fact, uh, I think oftentimes in practice, you will have to settle for a suboptimal solution because your time frame simply doesn't allow to optimize the algorithm properly because you will have to uh, test out hundreds of combinations of the different hyperparameters that you have to enter as inputs to the model. And um, you have to check in like some form of backtesting or cross-validation how they work. And uh, yeah, you will find that it just takes up too much time to get the best result. So will you get good results? Yes, absolutely. Will the, optimi uh, will the algorithm beat other algorithms that you have uh, in your toolkit? Yes, likely. Will you be able to find the best that the algorithm can offer you? Mm, I think not. Like I said on the previous slide already, 
when you go out of the range of values that are in the training data set, then I, from my experience, the predictive power diminishes quite rapidly. So be careful uh, when you have such a problem at hand. And finally, as a negative, you really almost can't interpret the model. Uh, it is very difficult to see in the afterwards what kind of connections the model is making between different uh, columns of the data set and so on. That if you, for example, you work for a customer and he asks you, so why does your model predict this and that here in this uh, case? Then uh, unfortunately, I think you will have to admit to him that uh, it's impossible to know and that we just have to accept what the model is saying, which of course is not a satisfying answer. And some more simple models in this case, of course, they have quite an advantage because uh, if you use, let's say, simple linear regression as a comparison, then uh, when in doubt, you can calculate the values yourself and uh, you can uh, see the value is high or low because some of the input values are high or low. And um, yeah, I think XGBoost, such as many other more advanced machine learning algorithms, of course, they have a problem here that as a practitioner oftentimes uh, causes some problems with it. Nonetheless, I highly encourage you to try out this algorithm for your problems, particularly when the interpretation isn't so important and just the performance of your model is what counts. And so I hope that I could uh, catch your interest for it. If I did, then you can join me for the remainder of the series, which will be coming up in the next couple of days. And what we will be talking about is, of course, how to install XGBoost in R, uh, the package installation. And together with that in the first uh, or second video rather, we will be talking about the native implementation uh, directly with the XGBoost package. And we will be first looking at a classification problem. Then uh, afterwards, again, using the XGBoost package, we will be looking at a regression problem. And then we will be also looking at the implementation in the caret package, which adds some nice uh, like bonus features, so to say, to XGBoost and uh, also includes a lot of uh, other algorithms, of course, where, for example, with caret, I think it's much easier to do the param uh, parameter tuning because it has some really good uh, automated features um, to do that for you. And uh, apropos parameter tuning, that will be probably for the last video of the series where we, be, where we will be looking at how to get the most out of your XGBoost algorithm, um, what you can change about it, for example, how to get the model to learn more quickly or more slowly, uh, how to increase the complexity, reduce it, how to avoid overfitting, and all that, uh, uh, all these kind of questions. So uh, yeah, in the end of the series, which I think will involve around seven videos or so, you will be uh, quite an expert with XGBoost and you will be able to employ it for all your future machine learning problems. I hope that uh, I made you a little bit excited with that and that you're um, coming to the rest of the series with me. Um, if you will, then see you around next time. Until then, uh, have a great time and bye-bye.